Welcome to your Trig Survival Guide. Today we're going to verify a trig identity that allows us to take a closer look at the strategy of using a conjugate. So here is the trig identity that we're going to verify. And notice how the left-hand side's denominator has the expression one minus cosine theta. When you see an expression like that, one minus cosine or sine, one plus cosine or sine in a numerator or a denominator of a fraction, that's a good clue that trying a conjugate may help you out in your verification. So let's see how this works. As with any trig verification, we know that we want to decide which side to work on first and strategize before we actually jump in. So both sides look relatively complex in my opinion, but because I see the one minus cosine in the denominator of the left-hand side term, that's where I'm going to try working first. That's not to say you couldn't work on the right side. There are many acceptable solutions for verification, um, but let's go ahead and try that strategy here. So we'll draw our vertical bar. We are only working on that left-hand side and a conjugate to one minus cosine theta is going to be one plus cosine theta. That's just going to allow for some nice manipulation. So let's see how that works. We don't wanna change the integrity of the term. So we're going to multiply by one plus cosine over one plus cosine. That's just like multiplying by one. Now I like to include parentheses here and then put parentheses around the denominator just so we aren't going to mess up any of our multiplication. All right, so our numerator, we're just going to have the one plus cosine theta times sine theta. We may distribute that later, we'll see. Okay, and then that's going to give us a new denominator. Let's go ahead and FOIL this out. So we have our first two terms, one, our outer two, we have minus cosine theta. The inner, we have plus cosine theta. We should expect that because the outer and the inner terms cancel when you're multiplying conjugates. And then we have minus cosine squared theta. All right, so let's go ahead and cancel those two out. We don't really need them. And all of that equals to our right-hand side. So I'll abbreviate RS instead of rewriting that right-hand side. All right, at this point, we see that one minus cosine squared in the denominator, and that should throw up a red flag. That is part of a Pythagorean identity. Remember that we can rearrange our Pythagorean identities. So the base identity is cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to one. So if you subtract cosine squared from both sides, we know that sine squared is equal to one minus cosine squared. So we can replace that denominator when we're thinking about our next step. We can replace one minus cosine squared with just a sine squared. And we should know that's going to benefit us because we see that term sine in the numerator and we're thinking that'll give us some opportunities for canceling. So let's rewrite now. We have one plus cosine theta times sine still in the numerator all over the Pythagorean substitution sine squared equal to the right hand side. So we're going to kind of pause to assess here. We know we can cancel out that common factor of sine. So that cancels the sine up here to one. And in the denominator, we're left with a single sine theta. Remember sine squared is just sine times sine. And now we can do a little more assessment here. We have two terms in the numerator, a single term in the denominator, and we're trying to split it apart. Let's look back to that right side. We're trying to split it apart into two separate terms. So let's separate those terms in the numerator. We're splitting apart this fraction and we'll write it as one over sine theta. We're undoing a common denominator if you wanna think about it that way. One over sine theta plus cosine theta over sine theta. And that equals the right-hand side. A quick assessment here shows us that if we apply a few identities, we will have proved this identity. We see one over sine, that's simply a reciprocal identity. We know the reciprocal will be cosecant. And we know that this is a quotient identity. We know cosine over sine is cotangent, and that's what we want. So we have the proof here. Once we make those substitutions, we have cosecant theta plus cotangent theta equals our right-hand side. And I like to go ahead and write it out just to make it look nice and pretty for the last step equals to that cosecant theta plus cotangent theta. We have proved this trig identity. 
I'll post a link in the video description to some more worked examples. The best thing you can do to get really good at proving trig identities is to practice and practice. Um, so watch more. See if you can find a new way to prove the same trig identity you may have already proved a different way. Um, so all that practice will really pay off and in no time you'll be great at this. Thanks for watching and good luck.